Hi, this is Dr. Emily Sterning with AR. I'd like to say hello to all of our friends in Illinois. I was born in the Chicago area, which kind of explains some things. I got some interesting news in this forecast for Chicago. There's a lot of opportunity in the rest of the state as well. Illinois, very interesting potential as we look towards 2050. Everyone in Illinois already knows our climate is nasty. If you enjoy being stuck to your chair when you sit down outside, both in the summer and the winter, albeit for different reasons, Illinois is the place for you. That actually puts us in a good position as we deal with the coming changes to the climate because we're already used to dealing with extreme changes in temperature. Our buildings are designed for that, for both heating and cooling under pretty extreme conditions, and that is not true nationwide. We're already used to dealing with pretty serious storms, including tornadoes and straight lined winds. And we have pretty regular flooding and its associated community level impacts on major infrastructure. So the question for Illinois, unlike some pleasant states, isn't are things going to get bad? It's how bad are things going to get? And are they going to overwhelm the existing infrastructure? Let's check it out, starting with the winter lows. We're going to look at uh, the plant hardiness zones as a proxy for that. So this is our contemporary map, might not be exactly contemporary because it's from 1980 to 2009 and the last 10 years have been kind of wild, right? But back then we have a zone five in Northern Illinois, zone six for much of the state, zone seven down at the very tip, very Southern end of the state. Let's look at the projections for mid-century 2050 under RCP 4.5, a very moderate, doable, reduced emissions scenario. You can check out my video explaining that on the channel. So here we go, let's see what's gonna happen. A fair amount of change, right? This is not the most change in plant hardiness zones that we've seen for states as we've gone through the 50 states though. We see that zone seven is moving up considerably. Zone five is vanishing from much of Northern Illinois. And there's conservation of zone six in this middle belt of the state, which is nice. There's a lot of beautiful arboretums in that middle belt of the state, beautiful mature trees that this constancy in plant hardiness zone is, is good news for them. And let's zoom back a second to contemporary day. So you can see just confirmation, this belt around Springfield, this central belt of the state, nice preservation there. Bit of preservation of the zone five here in your extreme Northwest corner, but what is going on with Chicago? Chicago is moving up at uh, least a plant hardiness zone, maybe more, because look, right now it's six bordering five. Now we're talking about seven bordering six with zone five really far away. So Chicago is warming up pretty dramatically as we uh, move towards mid-century in the winter time, which many people are gonna see this and think, wow, that's good news. That's one of the top 10 things people hate about Chicago is the really extremely cold winters, right? So before we get too excited, let's look this information together with the summer heat. So we're gonna use the similar tool, the USDA heat zones tool. The colors on this map show the number of days over 86 degrees. Right now we're looking at it based on historical data from again, the 80s to 2009. And when we look at this, we got to re be reminded that Illinois is an enormously long state with enormous climatic differences already between Northern and Southern Illinois. So in Northern Illinois here, historically, you generally have a maximum of a month and a half over 86 degrees. Although the way we complain about it, you would think it was much worse. As you move into Central Illinois, it goes up to about two months over 86 three months and down by the bottom here where we see this peach color, four months over 86. So let's look at what's gonna happen here. This is gonna be a big change that you're not gonna like as much as news about milder winters, just letting you know. All right, so we move towards mid-century, big change, right? So we see a new color show up. This darker color is showing up at the bottom and that is indicating up to 150 days a year over 86 degrees really a, a truly Southern type climate. Let's, and around Chicago here, we're looking at up to three months over 86. In the middle of the state, we're looking at 120. Let's look back 
at contemporary map. We can see that this belt here around Springfield, the central Illinois belt is gaining maybe a month over 86 from what it was having before. Up by the northern suburbs in Chicago, it's more like a doubling. You're going from 45 to 90 potential days. Let's make sure I'm being accurate there. Yep, 45 to 90, yep. And down in Southern Illinois here, and that is from St. Louis down to Cairo, you're entering this new climate. And where do we see peach going into red right now? We see it in Mississippi and Alabama. So we're talking about a very true Southern type summer is going to be occurring down at the Southern tip of the state. So these are big changes. Again, we saw um, more moderate change, more conserved change in the middle of the state, fairly high degrees of change in the North and in the South compared to the middle of the state. So, this is pretty decent news, honestly, if you live in that middle third of the state in terms of conservation. That includes a lot of uh, nice mid-sized cities like Bloomington Normal, Champaign-Urbana, and Springfield. Without that change in the plant hardiness zones, your trees, your mature plants aren't going to experience as much stress as they will both north and south of the conserved central location. In that central band, the summers will be longer, but you do have a good water outlook. And those cities have pretty healthy infrastructure. I would be very optimistic about that whole central band of Illinois looking into the future. Compared to so many places, both in the Midwest and South of here, very optimistic about that level of change, very tolerable level of change. Let's get some more information about that heat though, because that heat map, it only tells us so much. It only tells us how many days over 86, right? And that, that can be kind of a big difference. Like if it's 88, maybe you've got a beautiful summer day and, or maybe a day over 86, it's like 114 and it's apocalyptic and birds are lighting on fire in the sky. That, that would be terrible, but we're lucky. In Illinois, Chicago has helped to fund some very detailed regional climate work that gives us a good window into that projected heat up. So check this out. This is in the National Climate Assessment and it shows the days projected over 100 for Chicago. Historically, there's like no degrees, no days over 100. I don't know if I believe that. I mean, I guess on average it's true, but I remember being a kid in Chicago and there would occasionally the mercury had hit 100, you know? As we get closer to mid-century, as we enter the time period that we're in now, on a graph like this, the dot is the average and these bars are sort of the expected range. So whether up to 2045, we manage to reduce emissions a little bit, like in RCP 4.5, or we keep going on our path in 8.5, there's not gonna be so much difference, right? You might expect two days or three days, one day or two days over 100. But as we get to mid-century, the difference is gonna become really extreme, whether we manage to reduce emissions or if we keep on the same path. And look at end of century, that's like, I, I don't wanna go there. End of century, you could be talking about a Las Vegas-like climate if we don't reduce emissions in Chicago. But you can see that if we pull down to RCP 4.5, which is not gonna like turn back the effects of climate change, it's just gonna avoid worst case scenarios. We go from having maybe three days over 100 in Chicago to having maybe eight days over 100 in Chicago by end of century. So most of those days over 86 in the mid-century model that we looked at on the USDA heat map are below 100. They're the 86 to 100 degrees. You're in a typical Midwestern climate still. I think this is really good news. And I love this graph because it's a dramatic presentation of how crucial it is that we manage to take the RCP 4.5 road. Really, it's, uh, it's good news. It's good news for all of us who love the Midwest. It lets us know that there will be a lot of continuity in our Midwestern climate, both in the Great Lakes and in the Northern Plains areas of the Midwest. All right, I'm rambling on a little bit. Let's move on. Whew. So when you're talking about those days over 86, you're looking at heat that mostly stays under 100 up in the Northern half of the state. We can't say that what happens in Chicago is what's gonna happen in Cairo, right? In the northern half of the state, we're talking about a very tolerable heat outlook. 
Well, we're going to have increased energy needs for southern for summer cooling. We're also going to have some decreases in energy needs for winter heating. Most systems, heating takes more energy than cooling, right? So we're talking about a less extreme projected strain on our energy grid than many parts of the country are facing. There's a lot of work currently being done across the state of Illinois to improve the energy infrastructure, which it may be becoming clear to you that Illinois is going to be a destination state. Illinois is aware it's going to be a destination state. The infrastructure does need an upgrade. It's a state that is working to prepare to serve a larger population. I'll give you some more evidence of that soon. I do want to address the heat a little bit more, though, because I don't want to act like everything's like all rosy, right? I mean, we're not talking about a future that's more pleasant than our present, right? We need to talk about the heat wave projections. On a regional level, the projected heat waves are one of the biggest threats to the Midwest as, as a region. The federal government is projecting that by 2050, the once a decade type heat waves, the disaster heat waves will be 13 degrees over current highs and last for five days. So let's find out what that means for Illinois. We have our typical average highs in the 80s, low 80s in the north, high 80s in the south giving it a generous margin, a big safe margin. I would expect that our mid-century heat waves might get up around 105, maybe a few degrees lower in the north, maybe a degree or two higher in the south. That is serious. If that hit with high humidity, those could be life-threatening temperatures, particularly in the south, particularly if you look south of Effingham, we're talking about temperatures that could strain the healthy human body, put a lot of strain on livestock as well, but it's close. It's just barely over the threshold where you might expect the heat to be genuinely life-threatening in these events instead of extremely unpleasant. I think Southern Illinois would be wise to join Iowa and Missouri as we prepare for the possibility of life-threatening heat waves in 2050. Because preparedness is the key for those heat waves. We gotta keep the power infrastructure up to date. We need to make sure people have access to community spaces to keep cool if they need them. And as we build a resilient America, there's nothing more important for your own resilience than community, that's for sure. In Illinois, you're in an area where many homes have solid, deep basements. In a true heat emergency, a cooler underground space could buy you the time you need to make it into the evening, get to a safer situation for the next day in the evening when it's no longer life-threatening out there. I wanna point out that the threat of serious heat emergencies is not only more serious for Southern Illinois in terms of the raw temperatures, but agricultural communities like my own in Iowa, we have higher rates of hospitalization in today's heat emergency situations. That community resilience that we can build in our working agricultural communities, all of us know how critical that resilience is in any emergency. It's always worth checking in on the older people around you when it gets hot out. You could save your neighbor's life. Other than the heat, Illinois, you don't have that much to worry about. The weather's going to keep getting worse, but particularly up in the northern part of the strait, the infrastructure investment has been substantial. There's still a lot of work being done to get ready for the stormwater. The flooding issues we all know are not only coming, but are already here. It's not like there's no threat but we are dealing with the threats. There's a high level of awareness and response at the local level. I'm gonna show you this link to Chicago's climate action plan. This, uh, Chicago is a city that has been really on top of the game in terms of climate adaptation. They're one of 96 cities around the world that have been doing the climate action plan for more than 10 years. And it shows, I mean, there's been a lot of infrastructure investment in the city. When I was a kid in Chicago, Chicago had a lot of unique smells. It had a lot of unique layers of grime. The degree to which Chicago has been cleaned up is, is a little horrifying, but they're definitely shooting for a greener reality. And in many ways, they're making it a much more beautiful, livable city than it was 20 years ago. You can read this action plan and you can check out the back file. I found them back to 2006. They were working on climate action plans. Chicago is aware that it has a much better forecast than LA or New York. LA is on the top of the federal lists for mass casualty heat events by 2050. New York, check out the coastal New York video if you want to see the type of problems that New York is going to have. They have very serious sea level rise threats and they're going to be so hot and so nasty 
that Chicago will look relatively pleasant. And you and I both know that's quite a trick if Chicago looks like a more pleasant climate than New York. So let's put this in perspective. The more you think about Chicago's major and urban competitors, and here I'm talking about both the East and West Coasts, the more you can understand why Chicago is spending so much money on climate preparedness. LA and New York City are both looking at rough rides with new life-threatening disasters. Threats you've never experienced before are more dangerous because you don't know what to do. Chicago is not looking at new threats, just more of the same. And it's a world-class city with excellent cultural opportunities, many strong industries, and absolutely no shortage of fresh water. I think you can read the writing on that wall. So let's wrap this up. Illinois is gonna get hotter, and alongside that, the plant communities are gonna have higher water needs. But the water outlook is good. We're not talking about anything approaching water scarcity. If anything, we're likely to deal with more flooding. On the southern end of the state, South Effingham, you are talking about the potential for life-threatening heat waves. North of there, we're probably looking more at extreme discomfort um, than directly life-threatening heat. The changes don't look severe enough to cause mass tree death north of Effingham. You might see some wildfires in the southern tip of Illinois, but the wildfire outlook even there is not as rough as it looks in Missouri or Arkansas, which do have pretty severe potential for wildfires by 2050. Is the outlook for Illinois delightful? No, but everything is relative. Chicago has the single best climate outlook for a major city in the US. At this point, the only thing that can get in Chicago's way for becoming the top city in America is Chicago. But those of us who are generationally familiar with the city, we know that that could be a challenge. In all seriousness though, this is some really good news right here. Illinois skirts many dangers, avoids many new disasters, and it possesses many serious strengths. It's a really good bet. If you love agricultural communities, you should go a little bit further north for the Midwestern territory with a really excellent outlook. The heat in Illinois will cause some production losses, both with crops and livestock. You'll have better outcomes for those sorts of things in Wisconsin, Minnesota, and to a lesser extent, Michigan. But if you want a more urban lifestyle, central to Northern Illinois is a great bet. There are 13.1 million people, conservative estimate in the US, who are likely to be directly displaced by sea level rise by the end of the century. We could use more people in the Midwest. Illinois and Iowa are both actively preparing to welcome people. Indiana, I think they are too from their infrastructure investment, but they don't say it as out loud as much. There are a lot of cool places in the Midwest, but if you're thinking about moving, you wanna move in a world city, Illinois is your obvious choice. This is Dr. Sherning with AR signing out. Please like and subscribe. Help get the message out there. There is hope. We can prepare for what's coming. Let's get ready.